We've all heard about some guy that feeds beef to Venus flytraps, but doesn't that kill your plant? Surprisingly, what happened was pretty good compared to the other two experiments we've done. As you now know, we can use a needle or the pinch and roll method to make the trap close around something that doesn't move enough to touch the trigger hairs. Now, unlike when we fed the plant jelly beans, which caused the trap to drip digestive enzymes everywhere and eventually leave just a small blob of undigested jelly behind, I thought we'd have something similar to when we fed the plants raw chicken. Even if the chicken just touched a trap, it would rot away. And more surprisingly, even if the plants had a complete seal and started digesting the chicken, it would still rot away. Yet, in the first few days, this trap seemed completely fine. And to my surprise, after a week or so, the trap had digested everything, leaving only what looks like a bit of fat behind. We all know Venus flytraps eat flies, but what happens if we feed them jelly beans? Action Lab originally did a video like this, but they had one problem with their experiment. They didn't show us what the jelly bean looks like after the plant digests it, so let's see what we get. To feed a flytrap something that doesn't move, you have to stimulate the trigger hairs inside the trap. There's two ways to do this, either with a needle or the pinch and roll method. You can now see that after a few hours, the plant begins to seal and started dripping the sugary liquid. Oh, it's actually sweet. I thought it was gonna taste like dead bugs or something. Even though the plant is loving this jelly bean, they cannot survive on candy and have to only eat bugs. After three more days, the plant had not stopped dripping. And I think this is because the digestive enzymes were squeezing through the seal, but I'm just guessing. However, the most interesting part of this experiment was how the jelly bean looked afterwards. The plant absorbed only the sugary coating and not the gelatin from the middle. Ever wanted to see inside the stomach of a Venus flytrap? Let me show you. Some of you subscribers may know that the trap also acts as the stomach. And as you can see, after a flytrap catches a bug, like the spider, it slowly starts closing around it until it makes a complete seal. And this is when the trap becomes the stomach. But how does this happen? Well, after the seal has formed, the inside of the mouth starts to secrete acids. And one of these acids is the same one that we have in our own stomach, hydrochloric acid. Isn't that insane? Anyway, these acids break the bug down and turn it into a nutritious soup. The soup is then absorbed through the walls of the trap to feed the plant. Now you may be wondering, why do they eat bugs? Well, in the wild, these plants have very little nutrition in their soil. So they have to catch their food instead of using their roots. And as you can see, this soup is very sticky and kind of gross. This guy scared me, but you will find out that he's building a web in the worst possible spot, a Venus flytrap. You see, he started weaving his web on the left here. That is, until he smelt the addictive nectar and just had to have a taste. If you didn't know, spiders like the taste of flytrap nectar. The crazy part is that their nectar is actually addictive and it gets the spider drunk. So not only is he having a good time, he's vibing. However, for this guy to have a proper taste, he had to jump inside the trap. That's because of these long teeth called cilia that forces bugs to be on the inside of the trap if they want the nectar. However, this is also the strike zone of a flytrap. You know spiders have good reflexes, but they're not enough for a flytrap. But my flytraps are getting really slow. If you thought Venus flytraps were the biggest threat to bugs, think again. Let me introduce you to the hungriest and probably the deadliest carnivorous plant out of them all, a pitcher plant. This leaf may not look like much, but it is laced with toxic nectar and holds hundreds of dead bugs inside its trap. You see, this toxic nectar is similar to a Venus flytrap. It gets insects addicted and drunk. Yet, the bugs that eat this nectar usually die in one of two ways. If a bug licks enough of this poison and escapes the trap, they will fly off and eventually become paralyzed. However, if they get so addicted that they stay on the trap, the slippery hairs under this lid, along with the poison in the nectar, make it very difficult for a bug to hold on. And eventually, they'll lose coordination and slip into the bottomless pit of acid.
What happens when you put your finger inside a Venus flytrap? Well, let me show you. Thousands of subscribers have asked if it hurts or if it would eat your finger. And the answer is no. All traps are actually modified leaves and not a flower like some may think. That means these traps are just like any other leaf. See these little spikes here? They're also just part of the leaf. They're not teeth or thorns, and they're actually very soft, like tiny eyelashes. To prove that these don't hurt and can't really digest our fingers, I stood here for half an hour. The trap closed tighter on my finger, and it might have started producing acids to try and eat my finger, but it just isn't strong enough to break through our skin. I will also won't be standing around long enough for it to really do any damage. And don't worry, this doesn't hurt the plant at all. But to say thank you, I gave the Venus flytrap a fly and it closed in such an interesting way. At the top corner and then the bottom and it kept on repeating this pattern. My Venus flytraps had a tug of war. I have always been curious to see if this was even possible and if it was, what would happen if they pulled each other's mouths open? As we know by now, the trigger hairs inside the trap cause the plants to close their mouths. But if one side is held open, would it try harder and harder to close its mouth or would it just give up? At first, I thought they would both kind of get stuck and not move, but it seems like they actually do pull against each other more and more to close their mouth. But then I started wondering, if they keep on pulling this much, would they be strong enough to actually rip the other trap open? I remembered back to when I opened the stomach of a Venus flytrap. There was enough force pressing against my fingers that it seemed very possible that they could tear each other apart. They have a force of around 6 psi, which I guess means that it is possible for them to slightly tear a leaf open. But as it turns out, the teeth are so soft that the string just slid right off. Even though Venus flytraps can catch wasps, they are one of the few insects that can escape. There are a few reasons that make wasps one of the most difficult prey to catch. Firstly, we all know wasps have stingers. And trust me, those stings hurt a lot. Now usually, when something attacks a wasp, they attack right back. However, as you can see, it doesn't affect the plant. But wasps are also extremely strong. You'll see just how strong this wasp is as it almost pushes its way out. However, I don't think it believed in itself because it gave up. Yet, a wasp's secret weapon are their incredibly powerful and sharp jaws. They usually cut through the walls of the trap and break free. In spite of this, it couldn't get a good grip on this fly trap. You would not believe the battles that have been happening in our garden. We both know how annoying flies are, but who would have thought that they were capable of plotting against us. This irritating fly is fighting back by forcing as many traps to close as possible. This will keep his fly friends safe, but it will also cause our plants to starve. Every time a Venus flytrap closes, it uses a bit of energy. If a trap is mistakenly closed once or twice, every now and then, it's not a big deal. But when, what? three, four traps are falsely closed within a few minutes, it can seriously slow the plant down. I just wonder if this fly will escape while it can, or will the plant be able to catch this fly and get some of that valuable energy back? Something strange is happening in our garden. Watching these plants eat is so damn satisfying, but opening them up when they're done is even better. And that's the problem with these plants. When 12 year old me learned that there were more carnivorous plants than just Venus flytraps, my mind was pretty much blown. I understood that some snap closed and that some are super sticky, but I couldn't understand how one like this was literally just a tube. I felt like it was a scam so I got one, just to prove that they couldn't actually catch anything. Yet, after a few hours of staring, a fly came past, ate some nectar, and the idiot fell in. And then it happened again, and again, and eventually, I had spent hours watching a plant eat, only to wonder what it looked like inside. And so, I cut off an old trap just to figure it out. Little did I know that watching these plants eat was so satisfying 
that I'd spend the rest of my life caring about them. Have you ever been told to feed a Venus flytrap raw chicken? Well, it's a terrible thing to do. Let me show you why. I got a small piece of chicken to feed this plant, and as you can see, this guy is just not interested. This is because Venus flytraps need their food to move on these trigger hairs you can see here. If the food doesn't move, the trap simply won't close. However, raw chicken attracts something that the plant does like. Flies. While eating this chicken, this fly would also have some flytrap nectar, which as you know, gets the fly drunk. The fly got so drunk that even after it started raining, a raindrop hit this guy on the head and he didn't leave. Because of the rain, I thought I'd show you how the plant doesn't seal around the chicken either. This is for the same reasons as earlier. The trigger hairs have to keep getting touched. However, this plant should have eaten those flies earlier. I think I'm realizing what's happening to our plants. This Venus flytrap had a big snack, but it didn't eat it right away. Let me explain why. Venus flytraps wait for their food to touch special hairs inside their mouths a few times before they close their mouths. That's exactly what this little flytrap did. But you'll notice that it hasn't fully closed its mouth yet. Closing its mouth is called sealing. It's when the trap says, hey, I have food here and it's big enough for me to eat. So let me close my mouth and start digesting. So why doesn't it close its mouth and eat right away? Well, Venus flytraps need their food to keep moving inside their mouth to keep touching the special hairs. If they don't move and touch these hairs, the traps will slowly open back up. That's how the trap knows that what they have is actually food, instead of something like a leaf or a twig. And as you saw, this meal stayed still for quite a while. But after about half an hour, the meal started moving again and touched those special hairs in the trap. That meant the trap finally started closing its mouth to eat its dinner. Let me know if you want to see a full time lapse of this plant digesting its food and opening back up and follow to see that video.